Okay, this is kind of a semi-review and semi-discussion on things that basically need discussing in my book. Namely, Final Fantasy XIII, the series. Yeah, apparently Final Fantasy XIII was so popular that that Square Enix had to make a series out of it. Which is... What the hell is that? What is that thing called? The Final Fantasy XIII... Three? Lightning Returns or something? I don't know. But, as you probably guessed, I hated these games. I hated... I hated both of them that came out so far. They, and I'm not even saying that because I'm not an anime fan. I mean, I've had plenty of things, plenty of things that were outside my comfort zone before. Because, okay, it's probably best to start out with the story. The story of the game is, um, or the first game, is the the world of Cocoon, which is a stupid name, but. The world of Cocoon is under the iron grip of these, uh, um, deities type beings called the Foul Sea. Um, and, and basically, the Foul Sea are. What are they? The. They're these beings that rule over the land. Okay, 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 okay. There's, um... And basically what they sometimes do to get stuff done is they take someone, just some random person, mark them with this uh, symbol or something, and makes basically makes them a Lassi. And these Lassi have some kind of magical power or something they can... They can control magic, and they're extremely dangerous. And basically, people people treat them like basically the diseased in some kind of epidemic. I mean, I mean, people are quarantining these guys off. That they, they're people are saying like, "Oh, the sea are the enemy. We hate those the sea. I mean, they're monsters." So. So the the fallacy makes Lassi out of ordinary people in order to accomplish these tasks. And and already I'm thinking, okay, if the fallacy are so powerful, why did they need people to do tasks for them? Whatever. And my claim or my question is never really answered. In fact, the game only raises more questions. Like how does if you're a Lassie, how do you know what the Fallacy wants you to do? Which, that's never answered either. I mean, all you're given is kind of like this dream sequence thing that, or this kind of, uh, I think they say hazy glimpse in your, or this vision of, of some location or some creature or some person, and you're supposed to figure out from that what the foul what the fallacy wants you to do. And I'm thinking, you know, if these things are so powerful and so mysterious and so far beyond human understanding, why don't they just tell you what they want? I mean, really, wouldn't that be so much easier? I mean, these fallacy, they could, for all they know, they could they could brand a Lassie and show them a picture of, uh, of, say, this one of the Capitol building. I mean, that could either mean... That could mean... A, a whole slew of things, like... Destroy the Capitol building, or defend the Capitol building, or... Or, um... Or just go to the Capitol building, or whatever. How are you supposed to know? I mean, how do these... Let's see... How do these fallacy expect to get anything done? But... I'm getting... I'm getting off topic. So, so the game revolves around this uh, this group of characters, the most significant of which is this kind of female soldier named Lightning, who basically basically her deal is that 
the Falci made a Lassi out of her sister Sarah, and she's um and she's and she's all pissed off. She she's like, oh, I hate the Falci. Blah 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 blah. So um, there's Snow, who was the fiance of Sarah before before she became a Lassi, and that. And basically, he's this resistance leader who's. I can only assume they're. They're fighting against the Foul Sea because that seems like the most logical thing to fight against. And the Foul Sea have these kind of foot soldiers called Psycom. Um. Who else? There's Saz, who's. He's oh he's a black guy so of course he's he's got this huge afro, um and um and and he has a little a little uh a little chick a little bird next nesting in his hair. Try figuring that one out, but but um there's him, there's Hope who believe it or not is a guy. I mean I mean he's this teenage kid who. I don't really know what his deal is. I mean, his mom fell off of the the highway, and and he's all angsty and whiny and sad about it. And he joins them on the quest or whatever. There's Vanille, who's really annoying. She just kind of uh, she she just she's always happy. I mean, she's I mean, she never stops making these kind of squeaking monosyllabic phrases what that basically symbolize or basically manifest all all the things I hate about anime are manifested in this one character because that because there are characters in anime who who are really that kind of ditzy happy um dopey char they have that kind of personality that that you know would never happen in the real world. Even the happiest people do not go around expressing it to the extent that these anime characters do. So, so, and then there's some other chick named Fang who's with Psycom, but not so much, and helps them for some reason. I don't know. But, um, but this group of people are, are then branded by the foul sea um and they they see this vision of uh what is it was it called some giant monster um and and they all have radically different ideas about of course since the foul sea never tells them what to do they all have radically different ideas about about what this vision could mean they like lightning is like it's like, uh, oh, this means we should destroy Cocoon, or, and the Snow is like, no, we fight Ragnarok, we should save Cocoon, cause, cause being a hero is awesome. Heroes don't need plans. And basically, the entire group splits up. They go, they trek all, all across this uh, technologically or supposedly technologically advanced landscape. Um, and. Yeah, that's that's basically the first game in a nutshell. And right away, the problem you will notice, aside from the the extreme linearity, is the fact that the game never tells you anything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this has got to be from a storytelling perspective, this has got to be one of the worst narratives I've ever seen in a video game. Because they, it's not told, it's not told in any competent way. I mean, none of the characters ever explain anything to you. There's no audience proxy. I mean, there's, I mean, there's no one in the game to to go like, oh, what does this mean, or what, or what is, what's the deal with these guys, or or what do we have to do in this place, or or what are we searching for, blah 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 blah. I mean, I mean, any when you're when you set your your work of entertainment or work of art in a fantasy world, you might want to have someone who the audience can identify with, 
that will ask questions that the audience wants to ask so that the world and how it works and what the main objective is can be explained to the audience. Final Fantasy XIII doesn't need this. No. No. They, all these characters already know what's going on. They, I mean, they, they reference terms and places and, and whatnot that the player is completely oblivious to. Like, there's this one scene where, they like, where they're like, oh, we have to go to Palom Polom, and I'm like, okay, what is that? Is that a place? Is that, is that a person? I mean, I mean, is that a military division? I mean, what is that? Um, and for a while, I had, I had trouble finding out what the difference was between a foul sea and a lacy. I don't, I still don't know what the foul sea are, because they're, because they're scattered around the world, these, they're, they like, big statue, like, glowing statue type things. What are they? I mean, never tells you. But you know, you know what, you know what the developers added to to um, quench your thirst for knowing what's going on in your game. You know what they added? They they added a data log, and basically every every little detail about the world and how it works. And and every description of the characters and the places and the and basically everything you need to know about the game is in this data log and and every and every few minutes whenever whenever you accomplish something in the game that the data log will be the game will be like oh your data log just has just been updated like like if you hear something about Pal and Polum your data log will update and then you can read about Pal and Polum and and I'm just I'm just thinking about that. I'm just looking at this going, you know, why? If I wanted some if I wanted to read about a world, I would read a book. I mean, I'm playing a game in a, that's set in a fantasy world, but I shouldn't have to read an encyclopedia of knowledge to know what is going on in your fantasy world, okay? I mean, that would be like if if in The Lord of the Rings, instead of explaining an Instead of that prologue that they had at the beginning, or 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 the frequent uh, explanations about about what the plate or what the state of the world is, or or what what's the deal with all these places, they would they would just be like, you know what? Here, read read the entire works of J.R.R. Tolkien. That. That has got to be the laziest form of storytelling I have ever seen. Because talk about killing any interest in your game. And that's not even the biggest issue. The biggest issue is that is that um, you can't do anything that you want. You have no freedom. I mean, you think in an RPG or something that's calling itself an RPG, you would have a little freedom to do what you want or, or go where you want. No, from the very beginning of the game, you are deposited in this, in this corridor, this never-ending corridor, and the only way you have to go is forward. Just forward. The game tells you to go forward. The game will not let you deviate from this one singular path, and, and there are no. There are no towns. There. Nothing about this leaves you any choice. I mean, even the leveling up system. The leveling up system is is basically predetermined for you. In that, in that, um, there are these different uh, paradigms or 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 kind of. Uh, special abilities that each player that each uh, character can get like uh, lightning she can go for this kind of a uh, strength heavy commando um, paradigm or or the ravager paradigm which can which is good against which is good with magic there was one other paradigm I can't remember what what it was but anyway it, every time you every time you uh, gain experience or defeat enemies you get you get these kind of experience points and and basically what you do is 
is use them to fill up this um, crystalline path um, to your next uh, stat upgrade. But the thing is, you can't choose with that. You can't choose what stat upgrade you want. And if you want, if you want health plus ten, then you then you basically have to fill up the meter to get like strength plus two first or something. I, and if you want some kind of special new ability like uh, uh, like level two fire, you have to you have to go like uh, you have to fill up the this specific branch of the. You have to fill up this specific branch of the Crystarium. That's what it's called, the Crystarium. You have to fill up this specific branch getting like magic plus three first before you can before you can then work on leveling up to the level two fire. And it just eliminates any any semblance of freedom. I mean why why market your game as an RPG, this this innovative role-playing experience, when you don't actually get to do any of it? I mean, you don't get to role-play. You you're stuck in this linear, in this in constant linear situation after linear situation, and and I keep saying the word linear, but basically that's what it all comes down to: linear. The, the game does eventually open up later, like 50 hours in, after 50 hours of a hallway, which I don't, I don't know why I was still playing, but but the game opens up into this into this big expansive uh, grassland or something called uh, what was it called the whatever. So so this so it opens up into the big big expanse of grassland where you can kind of free roam and, and whatever. But the thing is, it sort of suddenly tosses you into this landscape. It doesn't give you any indication of where of where to go. I didn't know where to go. I mean I mean I didn't have any by that point, by fifty hours after fifty hours of that corridor being hardwired into my brain, for the game to suddenly for, for the game to suddenly take the corridor away and deposit me into this big open world, you'd think I would be happy, but no, I was just unprepared and and completely caught off guard to the point where that's where I quit, honestly. And I have... I mean... And I get people telling me, like, oh, you... But uh, you, you can now give any role to any character. You can now upgrade any role to any character. Yes... But there's no incentive to. You've already leveled up the main three roles of each character. You're not going to go and and dump a bunch of experience points into leveling up a character's leveling up a role for a specific character that you haven't already been leveling up. Why would you? When you've already when you've already specialized heavily in three skill sets, this like um, probably probably 70% into the game why would you, what what stupidity would come over you to cause you to to all of a sudden forget those three special special skills and start trying to get one character to learn a new one that defies all logic i mean i mean when when it comes right down to it i was still leveling up the the other the three paradigms for each character because there was there was no reason not to they were already leveled up so high so I figured well I might as well keep doing it <sighs> it's phenomenal how how bored I was playing this game because it's a pretty game the graphics are are very striking and the and the lip sync does show visual presentation show a visual presentation that has been absent from the past few Final Fantasy games and if and if I if it has actually bothered to explain any other world to me call 
in a little little uh, sequence called exposition. Maybe I couldn't have. Maybe I could have gotten into the world a little more, but as it stands, I was completely disconnected from this world because I did not understand it. I did not know any information regarding this world, and as a result, if the characters weren't going to explain what was going on in the plot or what was going on with their motivations, then why should I care? Really? Why? I mean... And 10 and 13 too, don't. That is. That's even worse, honestly. Because. Because the story with that one is. Okay. When I first played 13 2, I had not finished the first Final Fantasy 13, so I was. So when 13.2 started up, it started throwing all these weird visuals and scenarios at me, some of which used the characters from the previous game. And, but the thing is, they did it with absolutely no recap of how they got there. So as a result, for the first like half an hour, I was completely lost about what was going on. Because the thing is, in the first game, Sarah, Lightning's sister, turn to Crystal from completing her focus. That's the task that the Falci set out for her to do. She completed her focus, she turned to Crystal. Which, that's not really much of a reward, but whatever. Whatever. So, so 13-2, turns out she's the hero. She's living in this kind of a Hawaiian-esque um, tropical paradise with, with a bunch of the resistance fighters. I'm like, what? And, and lightning is in it, like a thousand years in the future where she's defending this goddess um, from this new purple armored guy called uh, what was his name the Caius who really just comes out of nowhere and then lightning for some reason gets catches this this one kid named Noel who is falling out of the sky for some reason she catches him and sends him back a thousand years in the past, for some reason. Um, and basically, he tasks himself with with uh, protecting Sarah for some reason. And Sarah is like, "Oh, I want to see Lightning because apparently, like, everyone had deemed Lightning dead." So, so no. There's only two characters, two main characters this time around, because so it's Noel and Sarah. The thing is, A, Sarah was... What character did she have other than being the damsel in distress that you had to save in the first game? Why did they make her the hero? I mean, she... It's like... It's like Secret of Nim 2, where they made the whiny little sick kid from the first movie, the hero of Secret of M2. There was no point. There was no point, because no one cared about him. Or... Whatever. So... So the thing is... The game tries to offer you a little bit more freedom by... by including a whole series of hallways. Um... And, uh... Like, uh, I, basically, they're traveling through time. But the thing is, I have no idea what Caius's motivation is. I mean, I have no idea what he wants. And Noel, you don't really get a sense of what he wants. I mean, basically, the only explanation as to what he is searching for at least in the first six or so hours of 13.2, the only, all you get is he wants to make Sarah happy. That's it. That's it. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe there's something else down the line, but I, I gave up. I gave up. This, this is the second game in the series that I gave up on, and there's only been two games in the series, so what is that? 
<sighs> so, so that happens, and they're basically traveling through time. Kaius is trying to stop them. Okay, that's 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 simple enough. I'm not going to try to explain any anything else in the, in the game because the game again doesn't really explain anything. So, so that happens. She's lightning is continuing to protect the future goddess, whatever. Um, and honestly, there's a real sense of meandering in this game because because there's really really the entire game centers around Sarah and Noel stumbling through the timeline kind of like sliders um, although sliders was traveling through through dimensions what whatever same same difference it was the same style the thing, thing was sliders was a TV show not a movie if they did that in a movie then then the movie would would feel really off focus. I mean, they would just be they would just be leaping leaping toward these uh, leaping through these different different dimensions with a different goal in each dimension or or something like that. It works. It works if you're telling it in an episodic fashion. And I can definitely see putting it in a game, but the thing is, you don't really spend enough time in any one time period to know to get a, a real understanding of it and they seem to be taking themselves less seriously this time around and when it when it comes to the story and the writing because they put moogles back into the game moogles those little uh, those little uh, chicken looking things the 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 little plush toy looking uh, creatures that, that float around and that are basically that are basically put in the game for cuteness and yeah not really much else I mean it complete I mean Sarah has this little moogle that that follows her around I don't know where she got it but she she just has this moogle now um, but the thing is, it completely takes you out of the game every time this this Moogle shows up. I mean, this talk about breaking any mood in your game when you ha when you just have this this little this little creature, this little magical creature, making these squeaky sounds after every sentence. That is ridiculous. And they're trying to tell a serious story with this thing floating around in the background. <laughs> uh, in truth, I don't really remember as much about 13.2 as I do the first 13. Because the first 13 was... Honestly, it pissed me off a lot more. 13.2, I was just kind of weary and I shut it off before long. But anyway, 13.3... I don't think they're calling it that. I think they're calling it like Final Fantasy 13 Lightning Returns or something like that. Um, I still don't know what's going on. I mean, this it's not out yet. I think it comes out 2014 or something. But the thing, the thing with this one is Lightning is in this other setting or whatever. I don't know what it's about, but the developers are basically saying that it's going to that is going to be more free roaming. You're going to have free reign of this town. Blah 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 blah. But the thing, but the thing with this is, it's a little case of too little, too late for me because one, because for a lot of people, or or at least a lot of people that I know, they gave up after the first two turds in this series because. You're putting free roaming in your game now, when now you're choosing to somewhat listen to feedback. I mean, how you take this? Apparently, it's still going to involve paradigms. 
Yay. I mean, I, I never really find a use out of them. Just keep mashing the button. I mean, um, and truth be told, in the trailers, the town or the city that Lightning is going around in, it, it's, it looks, it all looks the same. I mean, at least from what I've seen, it, there could be an update since I last saw it, but, but basically what I saw in the teaser is that, is that this rows upon rows of what looks like Renaissance era apartment buildings. I know that doesn't make much sense, but uh, once again, it looks like Square Enix is putting style over substance. And if they want to get more of a general audience, um, then that really does not work. I mean, you have to draw your audience in with some kind of narrative hook. And so far in this. Th in this week, 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 13 series, can't believe I'm even calling it a series, but so far in this, in this series, you have not given that. You have just been, you've just set up this world, but in the process, you've completely alienated your audience, and I don't know why people are still playing it. Maybe... Maybe it's out of some obligation to the old days. I mean, maybe it's the kind of slim hope to of uh, of it one day getting better. Like maybe one day reaching the uh, heights of Final Fantasy VII or or eight. I mean, those those classics. But honestly, it doesn't really look like it's going anywhere anytime soon. Because the developers have said, have said like, oh, we we try not to listen to uh, to critics all that much. We 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 um we can't really tell an open we can't really tell our compelling story in an open world game. It's it's just it all comes down to a real case of mistaken priorities and maybe it is out of some some obligation to the old days because because that's my case with two and a half men two and a half men right now is not very good in fact at several points it's actually pretty bad I mean uh, but I still watch it out of some because I liked the old show and I kind of feel obligated doesn't really make much sense if you're not a fan but it's yeah it's, I think I've basically said my two cents on Final Fantasy 13 and I hope it gets better I mean I'm not out to hate these games I'm, but I just I just I just hate hate them so far which is a real shame I mean when Square Enix the best thing they've done in recent years is Kingdom Hearts and even that and even that has is kind of deteriorating in their uh, attempts to lead up to Kingdom Hearts 3 I mean they're I'm, I'm not going to go off on another tangent. This, yeah, Final Fantasy XIII sucks, and uh, it the series is dying, man. It's it's dying. In terms of in terms of actual compelling content, in term and not so much. Not so much commercial success because they they still sell reasonably well, but just in terms of the content and and just how how invested your audience is, it's it's dying. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's actually kind of painful to watch um, to see this 
once great series fall from grace I mean that's like Hemingway level depression wow but I guess there's always the possibility it, it could get better but they need they need a serious revamp I mean if they they need to make some major changes if Final Fantasy is gonna last um yeah yeah Final Fantasy get your act together <laughs>